Hello, my name's Jane. I lead the access team at St Peter's Hospice. The access team contact all new referrals to the hospice as well as managing the 24-hour advice line. I'm here to talk to you about support that is available to you and your family in the community. So what is available in the community to support you and your family? Your GP will offer medical support. Most people have a lead GP. If you don't know one of the GPs, it's worth getting to know one of them. The district nurses are a very valuable service. They will refer for carer support as well as ordering equipment when it's needed. The carers line, they are also valuable for you as a carer. They provide you support and advice, whatever your age might be. That might be practical support or emotional support for being a carer and having somebody to talk to, really. St Peter's Hospice. So we care and support adults in the wider Bristol area with life-limiting illnesses free of charge. We cover 500 square miles. We're a large local charity. We care for people with diseases such as cancer, heart disease, lung disease and neurological conditions. We aim to care for the whole person. So that is catering for your physical, emotional, psychological and spiritual needs. We seek to improve the quality of living and dying. We are also able to offer mo emotional support for children. We do realise that referral to a hospice can be quite a daunting prospect. These quotes will hopefully reassure you. Patients say, I thought it was going to be about death and dying, but it's been how to live and how to have equality in my life. Another of our patients attended day hospice and felt the day hospice made her braver she felt that she could discuss her disease and feelings with her family and not be frightened of the word death. Of course, we are not the only hospice. Uh, those of you who may have heard of Dorothy House Hospice Care, who cover the Bath area, Western Hospice Care, Longfield in the Cotswolds and St Margaret's Hospice Care. Occasionally, you may live in an area which is supported by two hospices. In that case, um, we would discuss your preference for the hospice that you would like to support you. So, as I said at the beginning, I work for a team who manage the 24-hour advice line at the hospice. This number is used by patients, carers, families, as well as healthcare professionals. Patients and families often call us when something changes and they don't know where to turn. You can call us, we can talk through the issue. It may be that we say contact your GP or district nurse, but it's fine to call us so that we can help you make the right decisions. It may be that you just feel you need to talk to somebody and offload. That's fine. That's what we're there for. Day services. So pre-COVID, um, we had patients coming into the hospice for day courses. Um, at the moment, we're offering day services via Zoom. So these courses are social support for patients, one hour a week for six weeks. There is also a carer's support group. Carers can refer themselves to attend this this course by calling us on the advice line. We also have a drop-in session every Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Just call day services and you can gain access to these sessions. A lot of patients have already fed back to us that even though the support is virtual, it's really helpful to share experiences and support and information with those that are going through something similar and know how it feels. Our patient and family services team offers support to patients, carers and family members. It's made up of a social work team, an emotional and psychological support team, spiritual care and physiotherapy and occupational therapy. 
The whole team collectively provide emotional, spiritual, social and practical support, both in the hospice and at home. Spiritual care can be about all faiths or no faiths, non-faiths. It's about what's important to you. Our clinical nurse specialists support patients at home by managing symptom control, working alongside your GP to alleviate your symptoms as best as they can. They also work very closely with the district nurses and other community teams. Currently, we are supporting via telephone when we're able to protect um, us all, to protect you all from the COVID virus. But we will visit patients if that seems preferable and seems that that will be most beneficial. We're currently supporting around 450 patients. The inpatient unit, so we have a 15-bedded unit at Brentree. Unfortunately, COVID has reduced our current capacity to 10 beds, but we're still able to admit patients for complex symptom control or psychological support. Most patients stay with us for 7 to 10 days. Of course, there are patients who have expressed preference to spend their last days in the hospice. We do try to accommodate this, although it does depend on bed availability. So where can you get support? As I've said previously, St. Peter's Hospice Advice Line. It's a 24-hour number. It's a lot of patients I speak to are very reassured that they have that safety net in case they need it, whether they use it or not. Nothing is too small or too insignificant. If it's important to you, it's important to us. Carers Line, um, they provide support and advice for all carers, whatever age. As I said before, practical support and emotional support. Penny Braun have a confidential helpline. They can point you in the direction of support groups and other well-being services across the country. An excellent means of support is also the Macmillan Support Line, who are able to offer clinical, practical and financial advice. Thank you for listening. If you do have any further questions, please call us on our advice line. I'd like to show you a short film about the hospice. Thank you. St Peter's Hospice provides 24-hour care throughout the wider Bristol area for patients with progressive life-limiting illnesses and their families in their own homes and at our hospice in Brentree. All our services are provided to patients and families free of charge and we provide a range of different services depending on people's needs. A lot of people assume that hospice is only for people with cancer. We see anybody that has got a life-limiting illness. St Peter's Hospice has really made a difference to my life. Right from the word go, I had community nurses come out to help me and I knew that we had somebody always on the end of the line. We also came into touch with uh, dear Debbie. St Peter's Hospice neighbours are a group of people that visit people in their own homes to help them out when they're not able to do things themselves. As James would say, sometimes all it takes is some talk therapy. When I've been really feeling down, she's been able to give me company and uh, raise my spirits, I think. That's a tremendous help for me. The facilities here in the inpatient unit are just fantastic. The rooms are big, they're bright and clean and fresh. You've got your own ensuite facilities. I look out onto the garden through very big patio doors um, and it's very nice to know that if I needed it to be, the bed could be wheeled outside. I'm very lucky in the fact that I have family and friends visit me. There's enough space here for them to either stay in the room with me or they can go to the cafe or they can use the other lounge area. So having too many visitors is not a problem. Staff here at St Peter's Hospice are second to none. They are so caring, they're patient, they'll do anything for you. Pull your toes up towards you, that's it. It doesn't matter what their job role is, you know, they'll all help you in whatever way they can. They just seem to be a different 
calibre of person to work here. It was when I got here, I was like, <laughs> Amazing. Day services are available to patients who have been referred to the hospice who have a life-limiting illness, but we also work with carers as well within our wellbeing programme. We offer visualisation and relaxation, Tai Chi movements for wellbeing. It's not just about exercise, it's about the mind-body connection. St Peter's Hospice has changed my life 180 degrees and opened my eyes to what happiness there is in the world that you can find on your own, putting all the positive things before thinking of all the negative things. You might not know them very well, but they do become your friends very quickly. We are married for 56 years. Cecil is suffering with myeloma from 2003. She comes in and she finds out how we are and if we need anything for the doctors. She's so helpful and she chat him and be with him as a friend. All the services, it's free. God bless the hospice. I appreciate them. Hello. So the patient and family support team try to focus on some of those other areas of the experience which sits outside of the, the kind of medical experience and the physical experience. We have the social workers, we have the physical therapists, we have spiritual care. So we try to cover all those areas, maybe not covered by doctors and nurses, but we work very closely alongside them as well. They recognise that I would benefit from being able to talk to somebody openly about how Melvin's illness is making me feel as a carer. It's isolating, it's lonely, it's sad. And then we have to pull ourselves together and then we say, come on, today is a new day and let's find something positive to do about the day. And humour, humour gets us through an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, people have a misconception about St Peter's Hospice. It could be quite a, a sad place to come, but that's not been our experience at all. It's about the total care for the patients that they're dealing with. You become part of their family. 